There we go. Okay. 3.4 is on measures of position and outliers. So as a quick reminder, the empirical rule table, we kind of need it for this discussion. God, I hope that turned out okay, let's see. In the center, we have the mean. That's not the mean. That's the mean. And as we go right or left, we add one standard deviation at a time. We've got one standard deviation. Here I've got two standard deviations. Here I've got three standard deviations. And as we go to the left, we subtract. The middle sections beeping at me. In between the first two standard deviations, there is 34% in each section. So between the two, we have 68%. The next two have 13.5%. So in between these two, going to negative two to positive two, we have 95%. And this is mu plus or minus two deviations. The red one is just between one deviation, plus or minus one deviation. In between the two and the three, we've got 2.35%. And rather than trying to fit that in up above, I'll do it down here. If I add up all those percentages, I have 99.7%. And that's plus or minus three deviations. So what happens, that's just a reminder, we're gonna be, oh, and outside of that, outside of that is 0.15% on each side. No matter how many more deviations you go, that has the entire value out there. There is very little on the outside. Very little. And what this, in terms of the picture of the curve, 
This is really like if the area of the curve, under the curve. So like if I were to like cut this all up and like design to make it a square or a rectangle where it's easier to see the area, this part right here is 68% of the entire part. Uh, so uh, usually these are on different scales though. I'm going to give you an example. Men have an average height of around 70 inches. I'll say mean of men is around 70 inches with a standard deviation of four inches. The mean for females is about 65 inches and a standard deviation of 3.5 inches. So, Jones is, F.A. is five foot, five and a half. Which is 65.5 inches. I had a student, her name was Brooke. Brooke, four foot 11. which is 59 inches. I am clearly taller than Brooke. But in general, that's not a fair comparison. Men in general are taller than women in general. So comparing any two, more often than not, the male will be tall. It's like comparing apples and oranges. We don't like comparing apples and oranges because they're two different fruit. So there's a way to like go, how can I compare them when we can see something reasonable? The way we go about doing this is we say, well, and Disappeared already. We're down to three. Where the fuck did it go? There it is. I'm shorter than the average guy, though. The average guy is 70 inches, and I'm 65.5. She's shorter than the average woman. So, like, who's relatively taller compared to their gender? So I'm going to pull this graph down. For, I'm not going to draw on it, but I'm going to like explain something. My, the mean for guys is 70, and I'm to the left of it. I'm like over here somewhere. I'm to the left of it. Brooke's also to the left of her graph on females as well. The question is really, which one of us is more to the left? Well, what I'm going to do is these numbers in front, the one, the two, the three, the negative one, the two, the negative three, 
I'm going to use that. As, I'm going to call that Z. Z will be the number of deviations away. So now if I can find like our respective Z scores, if I can find our respective Z values, I can see which is further left. which would be shorter. So what they do is they have the, the equation stems from just replacing those values up there, that number in front of sigma with a Z. And I'm going to be, each of us is going to have some particular score there. So our score is going to be X equals mu plus Z times sigma. And if you do a little bit of algebra, you get Z equals X minus mu over sigma. You don't need to do the algebra. You, this is just the formula. The mu is the mean. The sigma is the standard deviation. And x is the individual's value. So let's calculate what we got with Brooks and mine. Let's figure out Hefe's and Brooks' Z value. So Jones. Jones is, I was 65.5 inches. That's my X score. The standard deviation for guys was 70. I'm not sorry, the, the mean was 70 and the standard deviation was four inches. I'm going to set up my Z score for Jones. I have those values. I've got 65.5 minus 70 divided by four. Calculator, 65.5 minus 70 is negative 4.5 on top. And four on bottom. So when I divide by four, I get negative 1.125. That's my value. Oh, yeah, that's our standard deviation. Let's take a look at Brooke. Brooke was 59 inches tall. That's her X score. The mean for women was 65 inches with a standard deviation of 3.5 inches.
So I'm doing that same setup we have up above. I want to say my Z for Brooke is 59 minus 65 over 3.5. That's going to give me negative six over 3.5, which is about negative 1.71. So if I draw these on the same curve, the center is zero and we just go out, uh, for Zs, we're just counting the number of deviations. So those values are constant, they don't change. This is the Z distribution. This is also called the standard normal distribution. And you'll see that name again. So where do I show up and where does Brooke show up? And negative 1.125, which is below the negative one, but pretty close to it. Brooke is at negative 1.71, which is closer to the negative two. Now we're on the same grid. We can compare apples to oranges. Now we're just in the fruit category. And even though I am short for guys and she's for short for girls, I am taller with respect to my gender than she is. because I'm closer to the middle. Jones is to the right. It's a bigger value, bigger number, which means in this case, taller, because this was measuring height. Ready for more? Nope, I see pistols still going. Everyone ready? Uh, we use that stuff. We use the Z score. Or bell curves. Distributions that are bell curves. For skewed graphs, We like to use the median and the IQR.
The IQR stands for interquartile range. I Q R. Uh, the IQR is equal to, it's a number. It's the, the quartile, the third quartile minus the first quartile. So a little explanation of what quartiles would help. Since the graphs are skewed, they're not perfect numbers each direction. The median is always the middle number, middle number, which means 50% of the numbers are smaller and 50% of the numbers are bigger. So they, they start breaking it like, okay, if we're gonna do these as percents, like let's measure stuff as percents. That's what they've decided to do for these. So like Q0 is like 0%, which means there's nothing smaller than it. How much is one quarter worth? 25 cents, right? Same thing for here. The first quarter is not 25 cents, but 25%. 25% of the data is smaller. Middle was 50%. And these go up by 25% each time. Q3 or the third quartile is 75%. In Q4, 100% of the values are smaller. It is the top value. This is also called the maximum. Most people don't call it Q4. It's just called the max. Most people don't say Q0. This is just the minimum value. So we got the minimum value, the maximum value, the median. And we'll look at some data that shows you this and how we how we want to look for it. Uh, have you guys heard of like the SATs when you're in high school? Like Sebastian is going to be familiar with this. The I didn't say you took it. I just said you're familiar with what it is. When you get your grade back for the SAT, they give you a percentile. They like if you are in the 94th percentile, it means 94% of the people that took the exact same test as you did worse than you. So that's how percentiles and quartiles always work. Percentile and quartile.
tell you what percentage did worse. Maybe not did worse, but is lower. Had a lower score. Or value. So if you get the 99 percentile on the SATs, you're in the top 1% of the students that took the test. Uh, if you're in the 70 percentiles, uh, you, you beat 70% of the students, but that means 30% of the students beat you. So, a little bit more information before I pull up the other stuff and show you what's going on with it. There's some more information we need here. Like the I, I said the IQR was Q3 minus Q1. And you'll see it when we get that, the, the numbers up in a second. We want to find out what numbers, what values are weird. We want to know what values are extreme. Extremely small or large. We call these outliers. On the bell curve, where we were doing Z, if Z is less than negative two, or Z is greater than positive two. This means it's outside that 95% in the middle. I meant to tell you about that earlier. For these skewed graphs, the way they figure out outliers are determined like this. Outliers, we need something called the fence. We need to find the fences. The lower fence. is going to be the Q1 score minus 1.5 times the IQR. The upper fence. is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. These are all just numbers and you're gonna end up with a number answer. The idea is kind of like this. If we have that quartile thing again, with the min and the max like here. Pretend this is a bunch of land. We've got the me in the middle. When there's no outliers, The fences are outside. Uh, 
like there. They don't even have to be close. They could be way outside. It could be a long way outside. It could be out here. As long as it's not inside the min and the max. If you get the fences, end up separating part of your lawn, Like say if I had it right there and right there. Anything outside the fence. Is an outlier. It lies outside your fence. In fact, if we drew it like a picture, this is what things often end up looking like. It's called the five number summary. And box plots. This is actually in 3.5. So this is the 3.5 section. The five number summary is the numbers we already figured out. Min, Q1, median, Q3, max. And these are all available in staff range. That's called the five number summary. That's it right there. When they do a box plot, it's got a couple designs. They all come in some form of like this. They all look something like this. If there are no outliers, So maybe I'll use blue here. No outliers. The left line represents the men. The first vertical line represents Q1. The second vertical line in the box represents the median. The end of the box is Q3. And this is the max.
Now, if there are outliers, I'll show another graph. I'm going to make it slightly different. The th middle three lines still represent the same shit. This is Q1, this is median, this is Q3. If there's outliers though now, this left line, if there's an outlier on the left, this is gonna be your lower fence. If there is an, outlier outside it on the left. Same thing happens with this one over here. This is the upper fence. If there's outliers to the right. The, the outliers tend to represent people that are drastically different than the middle, the median. So uh, this part in the middle is called the box. These things that stick out to the end are called the whiskers. So another name for the box plot is the whisker plot. We'll take a look at doing this in StackCrunch, and then we'll point out some information that you'll see how it kind of, there's a little bit more information we can get from the box plot by way of looking at it. But let me write, show you how to get them. Uh, the five number summary. In StackCrunch, Stats, summary stats, columns, just like we've been doing for everything else so far. And if you want to see the graph or the box plot, you do graph box plot. Going to let StackCrunch show us all this stuff, and then I'll show you how to calculate the the fenced values by using the information we have in StackCrunch. So let's go look at age.
in the data table. You guys ready? So I'm in StackCrunch. I'm going to my data. And age had a pretty skewed area. So we'll look at age, stats, summary stats, columns. We did this for the other one too. We did this when we were looking at mean and standard deviation last week. Now we just wanna look at the, the values that we want. So I want the minimum value. I want Q1. What I'm doing is I'm holding down control key and clicking on the next one. If I just do them in order like this, I can drag them and highlight them and it puts them in order. If I do one and I click on the next one with control click, I just select that and it does the order I want. And so I can scroll up and down until I find what I'm looking for. I wanna put them in the order that the five number summary is in because it's easier to read. It gives us the IQR here somewhere. There it is. I'll show that and I'll show you how we can calculate it by hand too. So we got all, all the values. I'm gonna click compute. And then we're gonna look at the box plot. Actually, I'm gonna look at a histogram first for age. just so we can see that it's a skewed right graph. Now I'll look at the box plot. We wanna click on draw boxes horizontally. Make a note on this over here. Click on draw boxes horizontally in box plot. One of the biggest reasons to do this is if you're printing it out on paper, it doesn't fucking go all the way up and down and take up the fucking page. It just goes left and right, so it doesn't take up hardly any space. So see, it's got a, if I put my cursor over it, it gives me all the values as well. It also tells me the lower limit is 51, or 14, the upper limit's 52. I'm gonna write down the values I had up there uh, on the, the summary statistics. I'm gonna write these down. And I'm gonna write down uh, what the box shows us as well. Fourteen, eighteen, twenty-one, thirty-two, seventy-nine. 18, 21, 32, 79. QR is 14. Uh, before I jump over to it, now see the scale down here? It doesn't really show the 10 very well, but the, the 10 is presumably, I don't know, maybe here. They did a really shitty job. I think trying to fit the graph all on one page. Nope, they just made a shitty graph. If I look right here, and if I kind of like follow this left line of this box down, 
And it's just to the left of 20. And Q1 is just to the left of 20. If I follow this middle line here, this black line down, it hits just to the right of 20 and it's at 21. That's the median. If I put my cursor over it, it is actually telling me other values. Here it tells me the lower limit is, lower limit is the same thing as lower fence. And it says the upper limit equals 52. Something else that I want to point out between these two graphs. This shows that it's skewed right, which means there's a lot of data right here on the left stacked up. And the rest to the right is spread out. That's why it's showing this thing to the left of this middle of this box. because all the data is collected in a very narrow region. When I look to the right, it goes a lot longer and so does this. This goes from the middle all the way over here to the largest number, which was the 79 year old. So when you have a box plot, if there's a really long whisker and, and, or a rectangle whisker on one side, it means it's skewed in that direction. This box right here and this whisker right here are much longer than the box and whisker on the other side. It can, it can show you that it's skewed right, but that's how, they're, that's how you can tell. Long box and whisker, longer, I'll write that down. <clears throat> Let me click back over. So we had to click on draw boxes horizontally in the box plot. I wrote down the values, we'll do some calculations with them, and we'll be done. <clears throat> uh, a box plot with a long rectangle slash whisker on just one side indicates that it is skewed in that direction, that the data is skewed in that direction. I'm going to come up here and mark these real quick. This was min Q1, median Q3, and max. <clears throat> and I told you that IQR was Q3 minus Q1. Q3 up there is 32. Minus Q1 from that number list up there is 18. Thirty-two minus 18 gives us 14. That's the IQR we see right there.
you want to find the fences. The lower fence was Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. And the upper fence was Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. <clears throat> we said that a little bit ago. These two are the same thing, just the minus and the plus. So we can just calculate that right now. 1.5 times the IQR is just 1.5 times 14. Because we already calculated the IQR. If you throw that in a calculator, you're going to get 21. So if I calculate this, Q1 was 18 minus 21 is negative three. Q3 was 32. If I add 21, I get 53. So what they do is they go, okay, the lower fence is smaller than the minimum number. So I don't need it. So I don't need it. The upper fence was less than my max. In this case, it means I do need it. It's inside the box. It's inside the lawn. On the lower fence, being less than the min, min meant outside the lawn. There's a little bit of discrepancy so that you can see what it is. So they said the lower limit was 14. Well, they're just saying it's the min right here. They said the upper limit was 52, and we just calculated the upper fence was 53. What Matt or stat crunch shows you is the value that's closest to the fence, but still inside of the fence. So, like there was a 52 year old, but there was no 53 year old. So they didn't say 53. Uh, in terms of what you'll, uh, that's just showing you how to calculate it. I'm not going to make you do it by hand. Uh, in other semesters, I've, made student, I've had students do it by the box plot by hand, and I could show you how to do it, but I have an online stats class, and I can't really make them do it by hand very well, and I, I want to be able to compare you guys and see how on, online and in-person is doing, so you're both getting the same setup. <clears throat> oh. Like stat crunch gives us like an off number. Would it like mark us wrong on the homework if it was incorrect? If it like gave us that answer, or it might. I don't know if it's going to ask you for the fences or not. If it does, if it asks you to do the fences, do this method. Okay. Don't do because these are just the values that are inside the, the what we see in stat crunch. Like the lower limit they gave us when I put my cursor over it 
It says lower limit is 14. That was not the fence. The fence was negative three. It's just outside of our area. So don't trust it when it comes to this one? In terms of the fence. Okay. Everything else matched. If you look at it right now, it says Q1 is 18, and we can see that in the box on the left. It's 18. Q3 was 32. It, it tells us all this stuff. It even tells us the number of outliers. And you can come put your cursor over the outlier to see how old they are. So it's kind of neat. Well, that, that's it for the lecture for today. You are free to go. Yeah, you should have just in time to be done. Yeah, really. To be honest, I thought I was here on time and I looked at all the way classes at five. <laughs> recording this though, so what you missed you can see I'll, I'll have it posted any questions from anybody or anybody on zoom Good night.